Well, the second half was a little bit more interesting to me than the first half, but uh, it was still a great draft. Uh, hey, hockey fans, how's it going? It's me, Two Pat Stack, and welcome to my first official video on the channel. I will be reviewing draft picks one through ten here today, and covering some other news that happened earlier today involving Max Domi being traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, so the New York Rangers. At number one overall, selected Alexi Lafreniere. Uh, it was the most obvious pick in the world. There really wasn't a lot of competition for it. Uh, number two was a little bit more contested than number one was. Um, New York, you got a great player. You got a captain. You got a guy who was two, like 2.5 points a game. He was incredible in his draft year. So, yeah, congratulations, New York. You got an excellent, excellent talent, and I am very excited to see what he can do on a line with Zibanejad and Panarin. Next, at number two, uh, the LA Kings drafted Quinton Byfield. Uh, congratulations to Quinton Byfield on being the highest drafted uh, black player of all time. Uh, it's very impressive. Uh, he is a big player. He is a power forward through and through. The only thing that they had really to criticize him on was that he doesn't use his physicality enough. Uh, they compared him to Anze Kopitar, which uh, I think that that is a decent comparison. I think that he is a little bit more physical than Kopitar is, but um, I think that the scoring is going to be even. Uh, Byfield played 45 games. He went 32, 50. He had 32 goals, 50 assists for 82 points. Uh, he is a great, great player. Uh, my only concern is that I think uh, Stutzla has the higher ceiling. So uh, I hope that Luke Robitaille and Rob Blake know what they're doing with this pick. At number three, the Ottawa Senators selected Tim Stutzla. He played in the DEL, which is a German league. Uh, there, his point totals might not seem very impressive, but in the DEL, he was playing against men. So, unlike Lafreniere and Byfield and other Canadian players, and North American and North American players in general, he was playing up against guys who were in their 20s and 30s. He had 41 games, 7 goals, 27 assists for 34 points. So, he was about 0.75 points a game. So he is a pure skill player. They were comparing him to Patrick Kane. Uh, I don't know if that's... I, it's a good comparison. Uh, I don't think he's going to be as... I don't think he's going to be as good with the puck as Patrick Kane is, but he is going to be a very, very good player. And one thing that uh, is very interesting is at times this year, he was actually playing better than Lafreniere was. So I think that... Uh, Stutzla has a potentially higher ceiling than Lafreniere does, and Stutzla might eventually be the best player out of this draft. At number four, the Detroit Red Wings selected uh, Lucas Raymond. He is a Swedish player, and he played in the SHL, which is another league. Uh, in most European leagues, where you'll see prospects coming from, especially the higher-end ones, they will be playing in the top league, which has men in it. It's basically the top league in their country. So Lucas Raymond had 37 games played, 5 goals, 7 assists for 12 points, which, again, may not seem like much, but against men, and especially at his age, it's still impressive. And I think the Detroit Red Wings are not going to miss on this pick. Especially Steve I I don't think Steve Eiserman can miss on a pick like this. Steve Eiserman is kind of a scary general manager. He'll kind of surprise you with a pick, and he'll turn to the best player from the draft, so... I'm excited to see how Marit Seider turns out, who he drafted last year, and we'll see how Lucas Raymond turns out this year. At number five, the Ottawa Senators, with their second pick of the draft, uh, elected uh, or selected uh, Jake Sanderson, who is the first U.S.-born player here. He is the first uh, player who could potentially make the NHL from Montana. Uh, in the U.S., he ha was the captain of the U.S. Uh, development program team. He had, in the U.S. Development Program, he had 47 games played, 7 goals, 22 assists for 29 points. 
Uh, and then in the U.S. Hockey League, uh, he had 19 goals, two assists, or 19 games played, sorry, uh, two goals, 12 assists for 14 points. So Jake Sanderson, it's a little bit of a mystifying pick because I think that Drysdale is going to be the better offensive defenseman. But thinking about it more, Ottawa doesn't really need an offensive defenseman at the moment. They already have Thomas Shabbat. And if Jake Sanderson can play a more uh, two-way shutdown style, I think that'll be a really good thing for the Ottawa Senators. At number six, the Anaheim Ducks selected Jamie Drysdale, who for a lot of this year was uh, on track to be the top defenseman in this draft, and I was pretty surprised that Jake Sanderson went before him, especially considering going into the draft, a lot of scouts were saying that Jake Sanderson was overrated, but I didn't see anyone saying that he was going to go before Drysdale. Uh, Drysdale is your shorter, uh, prototypical offensive defenseman. He is the guy who's going to score you 60 or 70 points eventually in the NHL. Um, I think the Ducks really needed some scoring from their back end, and they need scoring in general. Uh, if they want to improve in the next two, three years, I think that they're going to really need to get some more youth in their lineup. Um, I think eventually they're going to have to say goodbye to guys like Getzloff, but uh, I think that this was a really, really good pick. Drysdale fell right into their lap. If they hadn't picked Drysdale, I would have been really surprised. Uh, they're getting a really, really solid defenseman and he probably will be the best scoring defenseman in this draft. At number seven, the New Jersey Devils selected Alexander Holtz, who the announcers uh, like, were basically, they weren't, I didn't think they were giving Alexander Holtz enough credit with his goal scoring ability. He is a European player. He played in the uh, SHL along with Lucas Raymond. Uh, don't, I don't believe on the same team. Um, Alexander Holtz, he had 37 games in the SHL this past year, 10 goals, 7 assists for 17 points. So he is more of a pure goal scorer. He's not as much of a three-dimensional player as some of the other players in this draft, but they were really underselling his goal scoring ability. I think that he could potentially be the best goal scoring forward out of this draft. And I think with playmaker, with guys who are more playmakers like Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer, I think he could be a really good wingman for them. At number eight, the Buffalo Sabres selected Jack Quinn, who can we get him, Jack Hughes, and Quinn Hughes all on the same team with Luke Hughes, that'd be great. Um, but I think that uh, this was a good pick for Buffalo, uh, as long as he pans out, unlike a lot of their prospects right now. Uh, Casey Milstead. Um, although there is room for him to still grow, but it's not looking good. Um, Jack Quinn is a very good forward. He is what Buffalo needs right now, which is a scoring winger. If they can get him onto the Eichel line and maybe push Sam Reinhardt, which I, I think that's the same position they play, down to the second line, that can really improve their depth. And I think that that would probably get Eichel to stay a little bit more. But um, I don't know if he'll come in this year, probably next year. But I think that this was a very good pick by Buffalo, especially uh, bringing Jack Quinn, because Jack Quinn moved up. I think that this was a good pick, but we'll see if them going down more in the draft to select a guy is going to backfire on them. Sorry, Buffalo fans, if I'm a little wary of any draft pick or thing that your team does. It's, it's been a hard 10 years, I know. At number nine, the Minnesota Wild drafted Marco Rossi. Marco Rossi is your flashy goal-scoring passing forward. He is exactly what they need. He has a scoring center. He's flashy, although he is smaller. Um, and Minnesota, at least when I think of them, their identity is a little bit more of a slow-paced hitting game. But I think that uh, Marco Rossi is a good pick for them. He is exactly what they've needed. He is, because when I think of Minnesota, sadly, they don't really have much of a, they don't really have anything alluring me to watch them. They just seem, at this point, kind of bland. And Marco Rossi, if he can be that flashy scoring player, then I think that will really help <laughs> make their games more entertaining. Uh, Marco Rossi uh, played 56 games this season with uh, 39 points 
81 assists and 120 points. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with Jack Quinn is that Marco Rossi and Jack Quinn played on the same line. And the thing that I'm wary with Jack Quinn about is who got the points more? Was it, was it Jack Quinn's goal scoring that was giving Marco Rossi so many assists? Or was it Marco Rossi setting up Jack Quinn to get him so many goals? So that's the only problem with those two going right after the other. And Marco Rossi had like 30 more points than Jack Quinn did. I think that uh, it's, it's never too bad to have too many centers. You can always move a center to the wing. It's a little bit harder to move a winger to the center, but if they had, I think that Buffalo did miss out on Marco Rossi and Cole Perfetti, but we will see how that goes. And at number 10, uh, the Winnipeg Jets selected Cole Perfetti, who, he might be the steal of the draft. Uh, it looked like it was his size that moved him down so much, but on their list, he was number five. And he fell to 10 to a team that's better than all the rest of them on this list. Um, except maybe New York at this point. But Cole Perfetti in 61 games had 37 goals, 74 assists for 111 points. He also played in the, o he played in the OHL with Rossi and Quinn, but he wasn't on the Ottawa 67s. Uh, I think that if... It could be really bad here if Winnipeg got the steal of the draft because that could make Line A a little bit more expendable. Um, and in this climate, I'm really not sure how much of a return you can get for Line A. But if Cole Perfetti can be the player that he is, at worst, Cole Perfetti is going to be, at absolute worst, you got a third line center. At absolute worst uh, in his career. But I very much doubt that he will be behind Shifley eventually. He is the second line center that they've needed. But if needed, he can also play wing. He is not only a center, but he can also play left wing. He is listed as both. So I think that Winnipeg may have gotten the steal of the draft with Cole Perfetti, although it's so hard to say with just how deep this draft is supposed to be. Now on to today's news. Uh, some pretty big news coming out of Montreal and Columbus. Uh, Max Domi was traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets along with a third round pick, which I believe is 78th or 72nd overall or somewhere there, um, to Columbus in exchange for Josh Anderson. Now, Josh Anderson's last season that he played fully in the NHL, he had 44 points. Max Domi, I know he had a down year this year, but the year before, he had 70 points. And, you know, it's interesting to bring that up because it's similar to Alex Galchenyuk, who he moved all around this year and is now in Minnesota. But uh, Alex Galchenyuk never really got back to that 30-goal season that he had. But I think that Max Domi, especially with how young he is, he can get back to that 70 points that he had two years ago. Um, I think he just had a bit of a down year, especially on a Montreal team that I know they technically made the playoffs, but they really weren't very good this year. Um, and that's not a slight against Montreal. They just weren't, they weren't anywhere near a playoff spot at all in any way. So I think that this is an interesting trade. Uh, Josh Anderson is a power forward and he is a top six guy in the NHL, but I don't know if this really helps Montreal very much in any way. It gives Columbus a center that they desperately needed, and Max Domi wants to play center very badly. And I don't know how Josh Anderson really fits into the Montreal lineup. And Bergerman, Mark Bergerman is, he's very good at making mystifying trades where you look back and you go, actually, that was a pretty good trade for them. So I don't think that this is an awful trade for Montreal, but I still give the win to Columbus just because I think that Max Domi is the best player. And not only that, but they gave up a third round pick too. And with Montreal's luck, that third round pick is going to become a Hall of Famer. So we'll see how it goes. So that's it for tonight. Uh, if you like this video, I hope you like and subscribe. And if you want to, leave a comment down below. 
Uh, this is my first actual video. If you want to learn more about what this channel is about, you can go watch the trailer that I posted yesterday. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try to do part two and three of the draft and try to pronounce the name of the player that the Devils drafted at number 20. So that'll be an adventure. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm 2 Stack, and I will see you later.